So you might have seen the headlines by now. Every other company is now moving away from Qualcomm and making their own chipsets. With Samsung and Huawei actually being first to the race. And don't get me wrong, Huawei made a lot, a lot of competitive chipsets. Like their F flagship each year really did push the boundaries of what a smartphone can do by performance and by innovation. But RIP, High Silicon and Kirin, you will be truly missed to be honest. But we've got Samsung on the other hand, who's had a complete landslide with their Exynos chipsets and the Exynos variants of their flagships have been a total disaster with even people signing a petition to Samsung for completely stopping their Exynos variant smartphones. But they've kind of recovered from that, especially with the Exynos 2100 actually being way better than their really really faulty and thermal issued Exynos 990, but they're still far from perfect or far from actually catching on with the Qualcomm variants of their flagships. But the whole point of this video is that apart from these two companies as well, there's been other companies like Tensor from Google and Oppo even announcing that their new flagship phones from 2023 will be running in from their in-house silicon, which is kind of a sweat and threat for Qualcomm at the same time because because each year's flagships are being called a flagship only if they have the highest Qualcomm Silicon of that year. And now that that's actually moving away from being an industry standard, why is every other company doing this? Like, it's just gonna be easy for them to just pick off an off-shelf component of Qualcomm and putting on their phones and to actually brag about headlines. And that could be as simple as that. But there's more to this than what you actually think of it because the smartphone market isn't some kind of toy game anymore. It's much more than that. So in early 2020 or late 2019, Qualcomm unveiled the new Snapdragon 865, which was their flagship chipset for the year 2020. And all of the major brands' flagships would actually helm this chipset. But if you also noticed one thing, it was also the increase in prices of smartphones in 2020, with the OnePlus 8 Pro jumping from a price tag of 669 from the OnePlus 7 Pro to having a price tag of 899 on the OnePlus 8 Pro. And also the S20 Ultra was $1,400. $1,400 for a slap phone in 2020. And that was the biggest ever jump from the previous year's S10 Plus, which costed $1,099. So when you take into all of this, you might think, oh, it's because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, it's maybe because of the semiconductor shortage. Note that both of these phones actually came out in February 2020 and April 2020, when all of this was actually just, it was just starting to rise. So when this was the case, why did smartphone prices hike up? It's because of the fact that Qualcomm was the only supplier who was known to actually give out flagship chipsets. And for almost like five years, it's not had much competition. Only on like the lower tier and like the budget tier models, it's had a rough competition with MediaTek. But other than that, for the flagship lineup, it's the only way to go. So it's either the fact that you just buy it from Qualcomm or you settle with a lower end chipset from companies like MediaTek or Unisoc. So when Qualcomm was the only option, they played it to their advantage and forced companies to actually buy their 5G modems as well, which helped in two things. First up, it was because of the fact that 5G was behind with so much of hype by everybody and also carrier partners like Verizon and AT&T needed something to hang on and when 5G models or like 5G phones came into the picture, they were more easy to sell by these carriers and, and Qualcomm really needed a good relationship with these carrier partners for its other stuff. And Qualcomm also makes modems, so they obviously want to make a profit on that considering that there's been like really less companies purchasing their modems instead of just using the company's own 5G modems. So with all of these factors come into place, it makes sense on like why Qualcomm is actually playing to the advantage. And if I was Qualcomm, I would do the same thing as well. But the thing 
when companies realized that this was all going on behind their back, and this was also a reason that Google did not announce a flagship in 2020 because they could clearly see that this was increasing cross board prices and they were clearly knowing that they had to release a flagship next year and they really didn't want to risk the market right now. They had to play it safe and hence they settled with a lower end Snapdragon Silicon. So when you put these all into place, it makes sense for why companies want to make their own chipsets. And there are some key advantages to this as well. So when you make your own silicon, you tend to have more control over it, whether you want to do machine learning better, or whether you want to make photos look more better, or you want this task to be very optimized and very well for the smartphone, or this should be good, or the efficiency of the battery should be this much. So when you're given all these options, you've got better customization and better fine tuning for that specific silicon so that the smartphone or the device is actually better made and more efficient in whatever it does. And now compare that to an off-the-shelf Snapdragon, which doesn't really have a lot of fine-tuning options and has very generic tuning to it, which means you end up with not so great or not so efficient tasks or not so efficient usage as well. So this is one of the major advantage of making your own silicon. Second advantage is from a profit perspective. Now, this should be actually learned from Apple, who is actually the biggest silicon maker for their smartphones till now, because of the fact that whenever they release a new iPhone, over the months of selling it, the more months it takes, the more the, more the profit that they actually take from that. It's because of the fact that they can achieve economies of scale, which generally means that because of their production of the chipsets or the manufacturing of the smartphone itself for so long, means the fact that they can achieve a lower cost per unit over all the volume. And that generally means that I can actually take up more profit as a company without having to slap too many discounts on my product. And that's how actually Apple makes a lot of profit even though they don't really put on a lot of discounts over the months of their sale of the iPhone. So when you take this into consideration for a lot of chipset manufacturers and smartphone makers who do both at the same time, this is a big advantage considering the fact that they've got more control as well as the fact that they're able to make a more profit without having to sell their chips to any other companies nor wanting them to actually slap on discount prices on their own products. And now third thing is the fact that because of all of these efficiencies and the profit that you're actually getting from this, you can make your product more cheaper and also the fact that it's going to be better. And now this is just a byproduct from both of these advantages. But when you look at it from a perspective of a big company like something like OnePlus, Samsung or Oppo, this is going to be huge considering the fact that you can save a lot year by year just by spending some amount of money and R&D every year on specific chipsets. Now, this is just going to be a big threat for Qualcomm, but I'm going to be adding more to that wound because MediaTek just announced their MediaTek Dimensity 9000 and MediaTek isn't some kind of like a flagship chipset maker because Generally, they make really, really low-end gadgeteer chipsets, and they've been competing Snapdragon along that way with their 700 series chipsets. And they've been known for very, very bad stuff, like for example, their benchmark cheating, and they have not that great thermal performance either. But now that they've released their new Dimensity 9000 series chip, it's kind of a turnaround tables, because all of a sudden you've got a new chipset person as well. And MediaTek is quite known for their cheap prices considering the fact that now they have this new 4 nanopicture process from TSMC and a bunch of new features as well, which proves to be a real threat for Snapdragon. So if Snapdragon releases their new 898 chipset, it's gonna be tough competition between MediaTek, Snapdragon and companies in-house chipsets. So all of a sudden, the smartphone market does not have a staple chipset manufacturer anymore. And it's gonna be exciting to see which manufacturers bring what to the table and how it's actually going to be spurring innovation into the smartphone market for semiconductors once again. And the more the competition we get, the lower the prices and better efficiency and better technology we get as consumers. So let's wait and watch to see what actually happens.